Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Harebrained Games. Today we're going to take a look at a game called The Coffee Roaster by the Illimitable Sashi. This is the Premium Solo Game Edition. It's listed very clearly, Premium Solo Edition on the box. It's uh, from DLP Games and Stronghold Games. It plays one-to-one -one player. It takes about 10 to 30 minutes, depending on how much caffeine you began with. Let's just roll into gameplay. Okay, let's take a look at what comes inside Coffee Roaster, the premium solo game. You get a box, and in this premium box you get special trays. I actually like that they have the uh, indicator on the bottom of the tray for which tokens go where. It's very organized, very arranged well. Coffee beans, let's go over them. You have your regular coffee beans in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, from lightest to darkest. You have... Uh, these beans here, which are def well, they're not they're burnt beans basically. So you definitely don't want to get more than a four powered bean, or else they just basically go, yeah, it's burned, it's bitter, it's bad, bad. And then you have uh, defective beans right from the start. These go in and mess with you as you're trying to concoct the perfect brew. And you have smoke smoke beans and these will come out over time the more that you steam the more that the more that you're you're roasting your coffee the more likely that those smoke tokens will become part of the equation and mess with you and then you have water water starts off as sort of dead weight uh, on your turns if you draw a token and it happens to be this one you remove it you get rid of moisture but they are kind of a nuisance um and then you have these flavor tokens. Flavor tokens come in three varieties, red, green, and blue. Each of the colors has a different type of way that its flavor uh, flavor effect is manifested. And finally, you have these sort of just one-off general purpose things, which you're going to see on the board now. You have your coffee cup as it's preparing to brew with the uh, off-centered handle. Not sure what's what that's symbolic of. And then you have your main board. Now your main board here is where you're going to be handling the organization of your flavor tokens and general manipulation of your coffee bean tokens over the course of time. Then you have your roaster and here you're going to be, this is sort of your tra timer track, you're going to be roasting, doing iterations of roasting rounds and as you're going you're going to be pulling certain 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 tokens out of the bag and then trying to manipulate them to make the best cup of coffee. Uh, this here is a nice handy track to help you sort of re keep track of how many, um, how powerful, how potent uh, you have of coffee beans. So if you have four one level coffee beans well that would be four if you have one you know four coffee beans then it's eight etc etc we'll get into that more later then we have the the coffee itself this is the cheat sheet that kind of tells you a little bit about where you're aiming for for when it's time to score but here's the big thing and that comes in, in comes in here is a bunch of different recipes for different coffee types they go from beginner light coffees to ex medium beginner medium expert dark roasts each of these recipes is a little bit different in that what you're going to have for your starting material and the target you're going to be hitting so there's a lot of variety here a lot of variety and an awesome excellent breakdown of the actual type of coffee and some of its roots and origins and etc so and that's it and then you get of course the manual coffee roaster the manual which goes over all the details of the game and it's it's 20 some odd pages and finally you get a bag because that's where you're going to be pulling your coffee tokens out of. And that's what comes in Coffee Roaster, the premium solo game. Now let's get into an example of gameplay and see what we're looking into. Alright, so I've set up for a solo game because that's all I can set up for in this wonderful one player game. How we do that is we grab one of the cards that we want to, to play and then we put... These, all of these up here in this section, are put in the bag. So right now in this token I've got, in this bag, I've got 13 zero coffee tokens, three water tokens, one crappy bean token, and three of these hard beans, which they actually, no matter what happens, if you upgrade them, they become a zero. They don't ever rise up more than a little bit. So these are, these are tough nuts to crack, so to speak. And then we know that we're going to start here because this tells us that we're going to start on this turn, round 8, or round 3, which has 8 beans. And that's it. Now we know that our target, now this is the interesting thing, we are going to try and get roast points at exactly 14. If we can, at the end of the game, have 
13 points exactly of coffee bean tokens, then we're going to get the maximum amount of points for this brew also if our coffee cup has these flavor tokens able to be put on. In other words, they haven't been used for their special powers uh, and saved for the end of the coffee run, these flavors, then you're going to get points for that as well. Now, how that works is... You're going to manipulate over the course of rounds all of the all of the tokens in this bag. Once you've done that, when it's time, the reason you're doing that is you're trying to create exactly the right cup of coffee. As you're manipulating, adding, uh, roasting, increasing in power token, whatever, as you're doing all the manipulation, which we'll see shortly, you're going to your your goal, the thing in your mind, is to try to get these filled up with exactly 14 points, green. Uh, blue and blue tokens in whatever variety they are no empty spots no bad beans etc etc so you're trying to make the perfect cup of coffee you'll be judged by how close you get to this by how well you achieved getting these in your cup of coffee by streaks so if you have like uh, runs of two 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 and two valued beans you get points for that and then you get of course negative points for things you do unwell Anyway, so the goal is here is to fill this up at the end of the game. This is sort of a once everything's done, once you've roasted as much as you want, you go, okay, set it aside and just see how you do. So it's really a two-phase game. Uh, it's, it makes it quite interesting. So we're going to start off and show you here. Now there's, there's abilities on this board, and then there's abilities on the tokens themselves. Here's how that works. We'll just go off and start playing around. So I need eight. I need to grab eight of these suckers. So I'm going to grab one two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to grab eight. All right. So I have these coffee beans, these hard coffee beans, and these flavor tokens. Now, the first thing we do is we, uh, we take a, a, a kind of take inventory of what we've chosen to bring out of the cup. So we at eight, da, 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 draw tokens out, no moisture, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then we use the token effect. So this, this red tokens mean you can take any two beans and combine them into one bean. That might help you as far as trying to fill in gaps. And so instead of having to have two spaces with value two and two, you could have one space with four, etc. It really is contextual whether that's beneficial or not. Now right now, that's not going to work because we have zero beans no value so zero and zero can't make uh, it just makes a zero bean so that's that's not helpful but these say you can take a bean and split it so this is the opposite they kind of work yin and yang this says take a bean and then split it into lesser beans again that doesn't work it's a zero bean we can't take a zero bean and divide it into a 0.5 bean and a 0.5 bean later on we can do that though but we can use these effects. Now, the way it works is if you want to, in, instead of using the flavor token for its flavorful flavorness, if you want to use it here, you can do one of these one-time effects in the game. Now, these are, hey, you can put a 0 or a 1 here over the course of several turns, and that gives you sort of a wild card. This could be very advantageous because then it counts for any color at all. Uh, if I put it here, for example, and I can only put where it matches, so here, here, and here, can't put the red and the blue, uh, then I get to take two more coffee beans out of the bag. That won't avail me much now. It might, but I think I'll wait on that. And again, this one says, put two, take two beans out and put two beans back, so that lets you sort of cycle. This says, take five beans out, put three back in, and then uh, trash too, which is nice for when you want to get rid of like br burnt beans, etc. And this basically says, put it on there and you can just trash, draw, just trash whatever you got. So if you've got some bad beans and some burnt beans and some smoke, if you have just the right combination, you could get rid of those and that's going to help you so that you're not drawing those dead weight beans during subsequent turns. That's what you can do with this if you don't want to use it for its ability. However, if you do use it for its ability, you can only do it if you can also place it here. So the left side are immediate effects, the right side are cup effects. So you use the flavor token wherever you want. I can't, again, I can't use these right now. I have to be able to use them and I can't. I can't combine two zeros into a something and I can't break a zero. So, but as I place them here, it's, say, for example, I was able to place them like this. And you can do this again over the course of turns. You don't have to put both beans there at the same time. Once you do that, then whatever this bonus is, you get. 
And these bonuses vary. For example, during the final phase, when you're creating that cup of coffee, you have an opportunity to take three beans or three, three counters tokens and actually not place them and instead put them in overflow. This gives you five spots for overflow instead of three. That's handy. This just flat out gives you a three to start with, which is uh, certain scenarios are really va valuable for that. This means that you can pull out two and choose one in this row as you're placing them and you're placing them sequentially. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This gives you sort of a wild card and says, yep, you can count that for a flavor token of any kind. It also might be used as a requirement in certain recipes as well. And finally, this is at the end of everything, when you have placed all 10 tokens, you are allowed to put two back, draw three, and replace them. So these are all nudgingly advantageous. You just never know. In this case, we're going to go, you know, I got nothing. So these are going to go back in the bag. I'm not ready to use those yet. However... This goes to the next phase. Now that we're done with these effects, then we basically, you know, roast the coffee and we increase it. So zeros become ones. So we're going to take three one tokens and replace the zeros. And we're going to take these hard beans here and make them zeros. So look at that. So one, two, three, and put those back. Now we've got three and some zeros. So our power is three. That's how much we got. And that is the end of turn one. Now we can choose right now to decide to, to at any point we can go, you know what, it's time to finish the roasting phase and just get into the, the make a brew, make a brew foundation phase. But we're not going to do that. That's silly because we only have three coffee power. We need 14 coffee power, coffee power, in order to even get close to feeling good about getting the perfect cup of coffee. So we're going to go to step nine. Step nine is the same thing. We moved it up, and now we're going to grab ourselves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Oh, this is interesting. I like this. Now, these are the water tokens. They're gone, so they were dummies. You dummies. Now, I could, again, we still can't take, we can combine these two into make a one, if we wanted to do that. And uh, notice we don't have to worry about red in our final calculation. So we're going to go ahead and use that. So we're going to take these two. Okay, first off, we're going to use the flavor here. I actually like the idea of getting this overflow. I think it's advantageous. So I'm going to take these two beans, put them here, and get a two, which goes into the bag. Now I'm done. So now I'm going to do, well, look at that. Oh. Look at that, I've got four, four zeros, so we're going to roast those, and that gives us four ones. Four ones. Now we're up to seven power. All right, seven power. All right, so we're we're slowly brewing our coffee. We're getting some good, good java jiving going on here, and that's it for round nine. Now, we're going to go to round 10. Now, this time, I have to put these duds in my bag. I don't like that. But now, coffee roasts double. So instead of going from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, it goes from 0 to 2, 1 to 3, 2 to 4, and <laughs> 3 or 4, if you blow it, it's like the game of 21. It's like, if you're over, then you get a nasty overcooked bean. Don't want that. But, here we are. So... I'm going to go ahead and roll this, and I'm going to play this one round, and then I'm just going to cut to the end so you can see kind of the end phase. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. I instantly got ten without even counting for reals. Look at that. So look at where we're at here. So we got... We got some motion here. I like this. This is double round. This could seriously help me. Nothing I can do about that, theoretically. I could use this blue bean. I have three blue beans. I could use this, but then I'm still going to want to save whatever blue beans or blue counters come because I'm trying to get the flavor points. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this weird thing. I'm going to use this here, which gives me yay. Now I've got five overflow slots, and this is going to take one bean and become two ones. Now that seems a little silly, except for the fact that this is the double bean round. Double bean! And then, 
I have to decide. This lets me take any two and put them in the bag before they roast. So this is a sort of an escape valve, like, hey, it helps escape, anyway, help the coffee inmates escape, uh, <laughs> escape the prison before the cops find out. Anyway, so we're not going to bother with that. We're just going to put this back. That's, that's okay. And then we're going to roast. Now look at what we're doing here. This is double roast Sunday. So you're double the points. So one, two, three, four, five. These become threes. One, two, three, four, five. And so, so go one, two, four, six, eight, ten. So now we're at 17, like that. These become twos. So then you've got four more. One, two, three, four. And what's that? And this always it this never doubles, it just becomes a zero. Look at that. So now we have all of these going in to the coffee rooster thing. All right, so that's about it. I'm going to actually cut forward to the chase, to the end of it, where you're going to see the actual resolution round, where we try to make this into the beautiful cup of coffee. All right, we're back at the end of the game, and here we are. I've gone through the 14 stages of the candy cane mountain known as roasting, and now I'm ready to begin to concoct the perfect cup of coffee. I did have some miscues in between the last video and this one where I I uh, overstepped the double double roasting around 12, and so I ended up with some, some burnt beans, and they might affect me in adverse ways. So let's begin. All right. First we go into the bag, we reach in, we grab one, and it is three. All right, I'm okay there. Right now I'm actually going to set that to zero to help track three. It just makes it easier for me. All right, then I'm going to reach in the bag again, and I'm going to get blue. Okay, so we've met one of the criteria, one of the blues. This is what we're trying to get here. Now we're going to roll in again, and again they have to be sequentially arranged. So three... Okay, we'll keep it. That puts me up at 6. The target is 14. I don't want to go over. I don't want to overbid. Or I won't be the next contestant. Well, the soy is right. Okay, this is our first negative. We could place there if we had to, but we have some overflow. So we're going to place that overflow there. And we're going to grab again. And we're going to go 9. All right. So we don't want to take too many more coffee beans, but who knows what's going to happen. And then, zero. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, actually. And then, I'm going to keep going. So what do we have here? We're going to reach into the bag, and we're going to grab this. Nope, we're going to let that go again. We're going to reach in again, and we're going to grab this. Okay, so at this point, we can only take 9, 12. All right. We can only, we really only want a two. A two is all that we're going to handle. So this, I don't like. We're going to set that aside. And this, well, good thing we have overflow. But I think that we're not going to do well here. We're going to probably overshoot by a little bit. But let's see. All right. Then we're going to get two. All right. So now we're at 14. We don't want any more coffee beans. But we also don't want any more damage uh, from our from our rolling. So we're going to grab another one and it's oh good oh good i like that that's our wild card so we need a blue a blue and a green we have a blue so we're rolling again and oh cool we have a green so now we have a blue a blue and a green so we're good there we have 14 here 3 6 9 12 14 so we're good there we have our oh this is good now we have to roll one more and see what we're gonna do and unfortunately i have this spot here so we roll a, a one well that's okay that goes there so look at that that actually turned out way better than i had feared so what do we have well let's take a look here by hitting the 14 mark we're going to get 10 points i like this then we're going to go did we meet the criteria and we did we met the criteria uh, for that so one two six that's one, two, three, so six points. And we also get points for streaks. So basically, um, for every use of the same one, so one, two, three, four. We used three four times according to our sheet. That is worth one, two, three, four, two extra points. And now we have to subtract. Oh, 
the heck? I didn't finish. Never mind. I'm a fool. I gotta fill that in, or that's bad. All right, so let's fill it in, and cred. All right, well, that's what we ended up with. Still, that's not so bad. So we had one smoke smoke, so we move one, and we get 10, 16, 17, 18, and one is 17, which isn't really all that bad. That's actually a pretty good score, particularly given my last try. And that's it. That's Coffee Roaster in a nutshell. Uh, and so let's get into my final thoughts on Coffee Roaster and what it means to me. Okay, Coffee Roaster, final thoughts. Well, I've been thinking a lot about this, and I think we'll start with the cons first. How surprising is that? When the game says that it is premium, I have to tell you that it is the truest exercise in relative contrast that you're going to get. It's premium in that in comparison to its previous original version, which was more cutesy and cartoonish and maybe less uh, enriched with quality coffee vibes, uh, it is, I would say, premium to that. It's, uh, it's got a more subdued contextual representation, uh, a professional treatment to the artwork and the graphics that change it from sort of like a Dairy Queen vibe to, to uh, sort of the library-like coffee motif. Uh, that I like though I wouldn't have uh, necessarily minded the other one either. Here's the thing. When I someone says deluxe or premium on something, I expect that it is comparably quality enhanced above what you would get in its current contemporary peers at the time that it's released. And I don't think that it's premium quality beyond that in contrast to its, uh, its you know, other competing products in the solo player kind of kind of fair now here's the biggest problem with it um it's there there are graphical errors that are pretty much n nominal like the the large coffee cup is off like they literally off centered the handle and so it's split into two but that's totally aesthetic whatever but the worst problem is that uh six of the tokens in this premium edition were misprinted as in threes had fours on the back fours had threes on the back that's a big deal, especially if you're a little confused when you're opening it up. For people that like to uh, inventory their components, this is a surprise. Now, the problem is this hasn't just something that just, just happened. This has been wrong for months. And uh, there are rumors in the East of replacement counters, but they've only been promises and shadows so far from May. Uh, worse, when the issue was discovered... Uh, people tried to get to the website, including myself. Their website contact email, the one they suggest, or contact website section, is down. It's 404. It's been down for months. That, to me, is not premium. Uh, that just doesn't work. That's not, nothing about that is premium. Now, before I felt my, feel bitterly roasted in this regard, there was a light in that if you do email a specific number, which you can find through, you know, viral information or studying places on the internet, like Board Game Geek, they will respond quickly. And uh, they will respond with premium promises to deliver the components. In the meantime, they suggest you take a premium pen and you cross out those numbers on the back and cross out the fours on the three tokens, cross out the threes on the four tokens, and that there will give you the premium edition. Again, this is the premium edition. You should not use the word premium with me unless you're giving me something premium. Sorry. I don't care what you did in the past five years ago. Don't give me crap and call it premium. Can you tell that's a sticky point? Again, in contrasting, like, this game is twice the price of Warp's Edge. It's about 20 bucks cheaper than I got Nemo's War for. It's, like, almost twice the price of Proving Counts. These are all one-player games, specifically one-player solo games, that have far more premium components. They have free premium trays, premium... Like, literally, for, for 20 bucks less, I can get far better components and better quality. So that's a, that's a definite mark against this game. The other one is that the rulebook is vague and unintuitive. The layout is subpar, and its information is not entirely cohesive in its presentation. There are references to flavor effects and immediate effects and cup, cup effects, but they all have these ambiguous understandings of when they activate based on when they're deployed. Years later, if you go search for people trying to get answers, you're still going to get confusion. You'll, you'll filter through and eventually get to the right answer. Um, you know, but particularly since there are slightly different like descriptions of the first and second edition rules, uh, a classic example, not even going to go there, just 
not gonna. So anyway, that should have been a very simple instruction guide. That isn't a hard sell. Some people have had success because they read through the initial rules and try to make the most of them. Then they get the app, which you can buy for Android and, and uh, iPhone, but not for Steam. Um, and then play that, and then it has the rules kind of built in so that you learn what you're supposed to do to, and resolve those ambiguities, and then you can go back and play the board game. That's circuitous and unnecessary for a premium title. So that's it. Those are two really strong, stark, uh, dark roastings I'm going to give this game. Now let's get into the pros, though, and this is where it comes through. Coffee Roaster does have, when you take away all of the faux pas and the... the in the crazy idea of what premium is to me, they are well presented components. They're actually decent. The vibe of coffee making shines fully through here. The goal cards are exquisitely presented, informational, very nice, very well presented. Matter of fact, there's a ton of touches here that provide context and history to the coffee roasting process that 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 really do make that aspect of it exquisite in its presentation. I would consider that aspect premium. Every bag pull is a plethora of possibilities that you can do, but it's not a rails like it's not on rails that you're going to get a a, like a positive experience from a positive draw. You could things could happen along the way when you're building coffee. I like that. I think that that's good. The goal cards do differ greatly and they open up meaningful strategic differentiation as to how to approach them to get the best chance to make that perfect cup of coffee. It's still a blind bag pull, so you're still going to have random draws, but there's a lot of chances to not leave things to chance here, and I like that. There's a lot of ways you can disperse the possibilities. In some ways, it is like a Nemo's War, where you're like, I have ways to mitigate many things, and I hope that in the end, all those mitigation factors come through when it's time for the final drip down. <laughs> anyway, in some ways, it also is sort of like Killer Bunnies, which is Kinder Bunnies, which is a game I loved. Killer Bunnies had this really hated mechanism where you spend your time, you're collecting these cards, these carrot cards, whatever and stuff, and then in the end there's a draw to get the carrot card that was the winner. You could win six of the eight cards and still lose. It's possible. That infuriated people, but I kind of liked it. It's like, even if you get one card, you could be that jerk that kind that pulled it out from someone who played way better. Here, it's kind of the same thing. You could do everything to set yourself up, and then based on how the, the chits come out of the bag in the, in the, in the cup, in the cup phase, the, the make your coffee phase, they could defy your every desire and leave you suboptimally, even though you thought you were going to do great. Conversely, as we saw in the game, you could not set yourself up well. You could do some things and then just happen to just squeak to that higher score, probably more than you deserve. I like that. Most of the time, cause and effect play a part, but I do like that flexibility, and I do like that, and it makes it very interesting. Each time you draw, you have a lot of interesting micro choices to make. The gameplay itself is a premier experience of solo for me. I will say that, and I think that's in all fairness, that the gameplay is a defining pillar by which this game should be judged. So if none of the other things bother you above, you're probably going to like Coffee Roaster. So in summary, Coffee Roaster is the most complicated form of blackjack that I've ever played. I love it. It's like you're trying to hit that number without going over, get those, get just that right coffee, while all the while keeping the flavor profiles on their spots, while trying to build sequences of numbers to boost extra points, and then trying to keep the bad tokens away. So the only thing keeping me from wholeheartedly like recommending it based on gameplay is just, it is it is a price point that I think is, a, is too high for what you actually get with a caveat. Uh, as, as a solo game, it underprovides in ways that competing solo only games don't and that is in sort of the the experience of getting it unraveling it playing it whatever um I would not say that this is the best solo game I've ever played and I would not say it's the worst I would say that it will probably improve over time for me uh it um you know, it comes down to this if you are a dark roast level satisfied you just you just played it and you're hooked on it after one or two games, definitely forget the price point. You're going to get a lot of value out of it. Uh, you're going to want it at your table. But if you're only medium or lightly enjoying the idea of it after a game or two, there's not a latte staying power, uh, and, and it might not be worth a high price bomb. So I'd leave it up to you, the valuable reviewer or viewers of reviewers, uh, to decide. But for me, I'm keeping it. I'm 
going to see it through. I have found that as I played games, I'm I'm finding it a little bit more interesting as we go, and I think that's the sign of a good game. I think the core gameplay is what's going to shine through, and I think I'll wind up getting my $45 worth for it. So, um, yeah, so there it is, Coffee Roaster. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Hairbrain Games. facelift uh, however uh, it subdued yeah, it's 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 pretty sub nah, blah, 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 blah.